Coming up on today's show, Mercedes-Benz unveils the EQC SUV and then gets its range estimates wrong. The Tesla Model 3 outsells every single BMW model in the US during the month of August. And Swedish automotive startup Unity announced it's going to be building crowdfunded electric cars in Australia. These stories and more coming next. Happy Friday, folks. It's the end of another busy week and following almost unanimous support for our new Short Shorts News Blasts, you'll be pleased to know that they're going to be a permanent feature on the show. Oh, and keep your eyes peeled out for some special new graphics courtesy of our recent hire, Erin. We start today's show with the official unveiling of the Mercedes-Benz EQC, the first brand new car to wear the EQ badge and the first production long range electric car from the company. While not everyone will like its looks, the EQC 404 Matic, to give it its proper name, comes with 300 kilowatts of dual motor power, all wheel drivetrain and an 80 kilowatt hour battery pack. During the official unveiling on Tuesday, however, Benz got the official mileage estimate wrong, claiming erroneously on all the press materials that the EQC had a range of about 200 miles, which is 322 kilometers. Shortly after, parent company Daimler corrected the error and stated that we should all use the NEDC approved range of 450 kilometers, about 280 miles instead. Given how unrealistic such estimates are, I'd say a figure that is 85 to 90 percent of the quoted NEDC range is what we can expect in the real world. Why fly? It's a question that Volvo all wanted us to answer this week when it unveiled its latest concept car, the fully autonomous Volvo 360C. Like many automakers, Volvo is eager to rebrand itself as a mobility company, which is perhaps why the launch video features a woman sleeping in her futuristic 360C as it drives her overnight to her chosen destination. The idea? That for short-haul flights, you'll use a self-driving autonomous car instead, reducing your stress and time waiting at an airport, as well as your carbon footprint. I remain to be convinced, simply because sleeping in your car isn't exactly, well, smooth. The Tesla Model 3 outsold the entire BMW passenger car lineup during the month of August in the United States. That's according to several different estimates released this week. Why is it an estimate? Well, Tesla doesn't actually release monthly sales figures. However, estimated sales data from several reputable online trackers says that Model 3 sales were somewhere between 17,000 and 20,450 for the month, while BMW passenger cars sat at 14,450. The caveat, any SUV larger than an X2 is classified as a light truck. So when you add those to BMW's passenger cars, we're left with a figure of 23,790 sales, just beating Model 3. Sticking on the subject of sales for a minute, Bloomberg NEF said this week that while electric vehicle sales are still a tiny proportion of the overall global car market, there has been a big growth in sales. This week, it suggests, we'll hit the milestone of 4 million electric cars sold to date globally, just six months after we hit the 3 millionth EV milestone. This is a massive contrast to the first million electric car sales, which took more than five years to accomplish. How long will the next million take? Well, leave me your thoughts in the comments below. Tesla's supercharging technology may have a new rival in the EV marketplace, at least it will if the promise made this week by GM is followed through on. It's announced a three-year partnership with Delta Americas, which, if successful, will see the pair develop a super-fast rapid charging system capable of refueling an EV's battery pack at a rate of 18 miles of charge per minute. That's three times the speed of current Tesla supercharger tech and twice the speed of the 800-volt rapid charging being brought to market with the Porsche Taycan. GM says it hopes the technology will be ready for introduction in 20 or so plug-in models that it plans to bring to market by 2023. Ahead of its push towards the end of the third quarter, Tesla has announced that it will temporarily end penalizing Model X and Model S leases who turn their cars back early, provided they're doing so in order to lease or buy another one. It's a clever piece of marketing which is designed to lift Model S and Model X sales figures a little higher before the end of the quarter. Tesla fans will likely see this as a chance to praise Tesla for rewarding customer loyalty with an early upgrade, while Tesla bears will likely use it to signal Tesla isn't meeting its sales goals. Have at it in the comments, because seriously, I'm sitting this one out. 
Want to buy a used electric car in the US? Well, now's your chance, says Consumer Reports. And that's because there's a large number of early electric cars like the 2015 Nissan Leaf and original versions of the BMW i3 and Chevrolet Volt, which are coming to the end of their original lease period and therefore getting traded up for longer range models or swapped for something like the Tesla Model 3. With all these extra X lease vehicles hitting the used car market, prices are now far lower than they once were. And with more and more models coming off lease, prices should stay low for the foreseeable future. European charging provider Ionity quietly announced that it's going to end its free charging introductory period this week, confirming that it will now charge a flat fee to all customers that are using its network of rapid charging stations. A flat rate fee of €8, Euro, or whatever your local currency is, now applies, regardless of how much electricity your car takes. It's more cost-effective than if you own a longer-range EV, something I'm sure will upset early adopters with smaller-range cars. With more and more electric vehicles selling around the world, you'd be forgiven for thinking that electric cars are finally transitioning people from internal combustion engine vehicles to electric ones. But new data from the California New Car Dealers Association says that the majority of new electric and plug-in hybrid sales in the States are actually customers trading from hybrid cars. What does this mean? Well, it means hybrid car registrations are falling, but it also means that automakers need to do more work to advertise cars to mainstream car buyers. Given that a recent study commissioned by the Northeast States for Coordinated Air Use Management says that Fiat Chrysler and Volkswagen did not advertise their electric cars at all last year, and Nissan, Toyota and Ford spent very little nationwide on advertising their plugins when they spent upwards of 50 grand on other models, well, it's no wonder. Now it's time for this week's Short Shorts, stories we don't have time to cover in depth. But as always, links to the stories will be in the show notes below. A new bus hit the roads of France this week, powered by ED95 bioethanol made from grape mark. That's the stuff that's a byproduct of winemaking. It's not quite as powerful as it would be on diesel per se, but I bet it smells really nice. As teased by Tesla in recent weeks, the next generation roadster was at the Grand Basel Auto Show in Switzerland this week, but sadly it wasn't a real deal, with Tesla bringing a design mock-up, essentially a roadster-shaped prop, instead. Toyota has issued a recall for all 2016 through 2018 Prius hybrids and Prius Prime plug-in hybrids to rectify an engine wiring harness issue which could cause the insulation to wear down in certain circumstances, causing an electrical short which would then lead to a fire. The neighbouring London boroughs of Hackney and Islington have become the first in the UK to enact a complete ban on internal combustion engine vehicles during the rush hour period. Nine streets will now be zero emission and PHEV only during morning and evening commutes as a way of improving the air quality a little. Under US regulations, every hybrid and electric car must have a noisemaker from 2020 onwards. But it's come to light that Ford asked back in 2015 to have exemption for this rule specifically for vehicles used for security purposes, or in other words, police cars. Ford also released the latest teaser image this week for the first of its all-new electric cars. Due in the next few years, the car shared by Ford has a Mustang-style rear and seems to suggest that a long-range sports sedan is on the way. BMW opened the order books for its iX3 electric crossover this week in Norway, with customers now able to put down 15,000 kroner, that's about $1,800, to be among the first to get one when production starts in 2020. German company Kreisel, who made that electrified G-Wagen for Arnold Schwarzenegger, have revealed a two-gear automatic transmission for EVs. Sure, electric cars don't need gears, but the transmission would help improve efficiency without sacrificing performance. Tesla shares fell early on Friday morning, supposedly due to Elon Musk taking a toke of pot on Joe Reagan's live web show and the departure of two top executives. I'll be making a post on this one soon, so keep your eyes peeled. Tesla may be making more Model 3s than ever before, but it does seem that many Model 3 customers aren't getting their cars when they thought. Instead, we're starting to hear tales of customers who are given delivery dates only to have them pushed back or to discover that their cars haven't even been assigned to them yet. Japanese automakers are to team up next month to launch a joint project to collect and recycle EV battery packs. Carried out through the Japan Auto Recycling Partnership, automakers will pay the organization to recycle the packs and to prepare them for second life or recycling. And that's your short shorts. Thanks again to our new hire, Erin, for the great graphics, and I'll be back next week with more. 
Alongside its plans to build superfast DC charging capability into the future of its electric cars, GM reiterated its commitment to expanding electric vehicle production this week by announcing a new battery facility with its battery partner LG in Michigan, where it will start making battery packs for use in its Bolt EV. The announcement, made by GM CEO Mary Barra on LinkedIn, also talks of an expanded battery lab at GM's Global Technical Center in Warren, Michigan, as well as the aforementioned work to develop a vehicle capable of adding 180 miles of range in less than 10 minutes. Maybe spending more on EV advertising should be in the mix too, eh, GM? As it continues the global launch of the iPACE SUV, Jaguar Land Rover is said to have secured a brand new battery supply contract with battery specialist Samsung SDI, with production due to start on a new production line owned by Samsung SDI in Hungary. According to reports from Korea, the contract is to supply Jaguar Land Rover with 5 gigawatt hours of batteries a year, equivalent to 3,021,700 battery cells, which is enough cells to make 55,000 iPaces a year. German battery company Lion Smart hit the headlines this week when it unveiled the Light Battery. It's a new type of battery pack that it says offers 80% higher energy density over today's current battery packs. To prove the technology works, it's built a special version of the Light Battery with 100 kilowatt hours of capacity and it's fitted it into an i3. The proof of concept pack is the same dimensions as the original i3 battery pack, but thanks to it being more than three times the capacity, offers a claimed range of around 700 kilometers, that's 435 miles per charge. There's no word on when we will see this pack in production, but Lion Smart's customer list is known to include BMW, Toyota, Volkswagen, Bosch, and Chrysler. Swedish firm Unity, which has crowdfunded the R&D of its first electric vehicle, the Unity One, has said this week that it plans to start building the two-seat city car in Australia in less than two years' time. By building as many as 10,000 Unity Ones per year in Australia by 2020, Unity believes it will both support the local economy and help reduce the sticker price to 20,000 Australian dollars, which is about 14,000 US dollars. Given Australia is quite behind in its EV adoption, it's going to be interesting to see if Unity succeeds. And finally, BMW is ramping up the hype ahead of its reveal of its Vision iNext concept car, the vehicle which will eventually lead to the promised production BMW iNext EV, a car we'll see in production around 2021 with a claimed range of 430 miles per charge. But while it wants everyone to know about the car releasing regular teaser images, it's taking the concept car on a five-day worldwide tour next week, which coincides with Drive Electric Week. How is it getting there? inside a customized Boeing 777F cargo plane in collaboration with Lufthansa Cargo. The plane will double as a staging area for the car to be revealed and contains miles of wiring for LED lights. But here's the thing, when promoting a new electric car, you don't send it around the world on a big old airplane, do you? And on that note, it's the end of this week's show. As usual, like, comment, subscribe, and support us using the links below. And if you want to show your love without spending a single dollar, why not make sure that you watch those ads on our videos or give us some social media love. Thanks for joining me. And as always, don't forget to be better, smarter, and kinder. Keep evolving.